Hello, friends, and welcome to the audio version of Nitography. I'm Patricia, and I'm coming to you from my little farm in the middle of Norway. It has been a busy morning of chores here on the farm. And now, as the short hours of daylight fade into darkness, I thought I would once again sit down in my studio farm shop to share and to connect with you. It has been heavily snowing all day. Overnight, we've had more than 30 centimeters of snow. The sheep are coming in and out of the barn, and there has been much shoveling. I am so pleased that they are acclimating to winter and enjoying the snow. Most animals within Norway are housed inside 24 hours a day. I knew that I didn't want this for my little flock. From the beginning, I wanted them to be able to come and go as freely as they choose. It is amazing to observe their reaction to the ever-changing elements. If it is a gentle snowfall, they come out, curious, playful, as if they're not bothered at all. But if the snow is heavy and wet, in they go. We have, of course, had our challenges because of the weather affecting our electric fencing and a few cheeky, rambunctious sheep jumping over and escaping into the forest. But all in all, we are so glad for the arrival of winter that now stays. Today, I want to begin the podcast by reading a poem from my knitting bag book with a grateful heart for all of the support and understanding that I received after I shared my challenges and truths on the first episode of the audio version of my vlog. It means so much when people take the time to reach out, especially when they share their stories, their experiences, and their challenges. Reaching out in small ways to each other sends a loving and kind message that we do not suffer alone. I've written this poem into my knitting bag book this past week as a reflection for myself, and I would like to share it with you as it has been such an encouragement to me. I hope it will bring a small measure of comfort. The thing about pain is it won't last forever. It kills you right now, but with time it gets better. The thing about scars is they all start to fade until nothing is left of the cuts that were made. The thing about today is there's always tomorrow. If you can't find your smile, I have one you can borrow. The thing about help is beside you it stands but it won't know it's needed unless you reach out your hands. The thing about love is you can't feel its touch until you let someone know when this world is too much. The good news after this week is that I'm feeling a lot stronger. Seeking outside support for the debilitating feelings of anxiety and vertigo has truly helped me. I am now working diligently on specific strategies to focus my thoughts and my mind on right now, not dwelling too much on the worries down the road or the unknown. Along with these practical steps, I've been taking long walks down to the lake each day. There's something about being close to water. I've spent a lot of quiet time knitting and recentering myself and my heart. Actions so needed. Most importantly, though, during the last week, I've had the extra time to spend together with Emma Grace, working on the farm, working in the farm shop, and just hanging out, laughing, talking, and just listening to her. Taking time discreetly to wrap an extra layer of love around her spirit stopping the busy of the thises and thats to remind her that she is loved, cherished, and supported. It's meant the world, 
We all get so busy with the comings and goings and what's for dinner and I'm out the door and day to day, having this opportunity to stop all of the demands and to take time has been so healing. It's early days, of course, for our family, and we have a little journey ahead of us, no doubt, but I'm feeling more equipped to face it head on and practically. I'm thankful for these difficult moments that urged me on to seek out the help I needed. Relieved that my sharing openly helped me to release the feelings of shame and vulnerability I had for experiencing these reactions. I read in Bryn Brown's book, and I quote, Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic and imperfect selves to the world. Truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but they're never weakness. As I shared, I have been quietly knitting away on mittens. I want to knit within the 35 mitten book by Maya Carlson throughout the Advent and the holidays. This book is currently only available in Swedish, but the translation will be available in May of 2019. Last time we connected, I had finished the Grånskott mittens in Let Lopi. This weekend, I have cast on the Herbarium mittens. These mittens are just perfect for me because I am certainly a collector of natural treasures wherever I go. I am using Roma Finlgarn in natural and green. This is the original yarn called for within the pattern, although Maya's shade of green is a bit lighter than mine. I simply adore this cuff. It's so delicate and feminine and really sets off the simplicity of the pattern. It's a sort of cable, but knit only with knit and purl stitches. Simply lovely. You can, of course, see visually on my Instagram feed. One of the reasons I'm so drawn to this book by Maya Carlson is because Maya shares with each new mitten design her own connections to the pattern, be it from her childhood her adventures, or her own imagination. It's such a lovely book, and I'm certain that you will enjoy it too when it arrives in the translation to English. Speaking of mittens, I wanted to talk today and share a technique for the Latvian braid. Latvian braids look intricate and complex, when in actuality they are quite simple to knit. They are created over three rows of knitting. You can find a plethora of tutorial support on YouTube to guide you through the knitting of the braid. But what I find missing when knitting the Latvian braid yourself is a foundation row before you begin these three rows. Most patterns consist of the cast on, the Latvian braid, the knitting of the cuff of the mitten, and then a repeat of the Latvian braid once again. So once you cast on the number of stitches, then it is expected that you will begin right away with the braid itself. I would like to share that if you knit yourself one round of knitting before you begin the three row repetition, you will have more stability. In my opinion, going right from the cast on to the first row of the braid is tricky and fiddly. Knitting this foundation row allows you to move more confidently into the braid and maybe you will find as I do that the result of your braid is much neater. I was so surprised when sharing the Trondheim mitten designed by Pia Kammerborn to knitters in Trondheim that many had never tried knitting the Latvian braid and as I shared had the opinion that it was quite complex. If there is a need to share further how I approach the knitting of the three rows of the braid outside of the technique I use for the foundation row, just let me know and I will talk in more detail about that next time. So now I wonder if you actually know the story or the history of the Latvian braid. Today I thought it would be nice to share a short version of the story 
and then if you're interested, you can investigate further. Through my research, I've found that the three strands actually represent the three ancient regions of Latvia. These regions were always in conflict, despite their common language, culture, and traditions. They did have one thing in common, though, enemies. A powerful chieftain emerged during these struggles. He understood that the three regions must stop acting independently and fight together in order to face the enemy. So these three rows of the braid represent these regions coming together. Indeed, without the strands together, the braid cannot exist. Each strand is no more important than the other. In fact, the braid would have no meaning at all without these three strands. Together, they represent the unity of Latvia. It is a fragile existence, however, as the braid can break or unravel. But if every strand holds true, the braid will be retained and Latvia will stand proud. Of course, this story only proves the symbolism and messages that are often knit into traditional pieces like the Selbu Mittens. I haven't knit very much outside of mittens of late. I've been working diligently within my farm shop to finish off Selbu blockers and Selbu accessories, granting as many Christmas wishes as possible. Of course, it's not physically possible for me to grant them all. But I've done my best, and those parcels are now sent off, hoping the postal systems around the world are all on track. New within my farm shop are my winter snowflake stitch marker sets. These were originally designed for our forest home knitting kit. But I thought they were just so lovely that I've decided to keep the design through the winter in case others are interested. You can see the forest home winter stitch marker sets on my Instagram feed. I continue to stock the Trondheim Mitten Kit and the Taxus Mitten Kit, both of which you can see on my Instagram feed. I've chosen the Roma Gamuseria Garn and the Roma Lamswool Garn for these kits as they are two yarn lines from Roma that aren't readily available outside of Norway. If you are interested in any of my handmade items, from Selbu blockers, Selbu accessories, to yarn kits, just simply email me at knittography at gmail.com and I will be happy to support your orders. Speaking of which, I do not have an online web shop. I do everything by hand when it comes to your orders, invoicing, and the accounting. For now, I just enjoy the personal interaction of managing my little shop by hand and not incurring the extra fees. Thank you once again for joining me and sharing moments of making together. I do hope you've enjoyed this audio version of my vlog. If you have any questions, comments, or wish to share feedback, please do not hesitate to contact me on Instagram or by email. Enjoy your week of making friends and keep reaching out.